friends. Happy reset day. Mine just happens to be on a Monday this week. I took today off since I was visiting my bestie over the weekend, but still wanted a day to pull it all together. A lot has changed since I last posted. I work from home now, so I've been adjusting to a new routine and system for myself. I, I love that she's cleaning her house, but I don't know why people of this size and caliber by the way, this woman does a whole bunch of what I eat in a days, and she eats crazy amounts of calories, right? I remember reacting to one of her videos last year, right? And she was in the same position where she was just rolling herself around on a chair because she physically could not stand up for prolonged periods of time because of her joints or maybe because it's very uncomfortable to have to support that kind of weight at any given point in time. So when I see this particular aspect of life, right, where somebody is cleaning their house, being productive, that's great. It's probably not a great idea to be in a position where you're working from home. And I've always said that when you're working from home, in a very general point of view, probably not the best. Because like nine times out of ten, most people that are working at from home are like in their house day in, day out. They have no human interaction. And when they do have inter interactions, like through a Zoom call or something like that, nobody leaves their house anymore. So you're spending possibly five to eight hours a day in your house from work. And then you're spending the rest of that day probably just chilling inside, ordering Uber Eats, playing, I don't know, League of Legends for the rest of your day. And... It's probably like very, very draining. Like I couldn't even imagine being in a position to where you don't go outside. You have no incentive to go outside. There's no reason to because everything is deliverable nowadays. And a lot of people that are very, very obese need a way to exercise that is like forcing them to get out of the house, if that makes any sense. It's going to force them to make better decisions. But if you're in a position where you're just going to get paid for being at home, it's probably not the best. I mean, it, it, granted, maybe it's good for her in the sense of like she doesn't have to move. She's probably looking at, at that as a, like a benefit or something like that, but it might not actually be a benefit given the fact that you have to literally roll yourself around your house in a chair because you physically cannot stand up. That is, <laughs> I, to me, it just seems kind of crazy. from home now, so I've been adjusting to a new routine and system for my But I will give her that she is cleaning, so that is like... That is a proper procedure that she, everybody needs to do in order to completely, I don't know, alleviate the household chores and stuff like that. So it's good. If she's doing it, she has a whole day that she's just dedicated to cleaning the house. That's some more than other people. I know some guys that don't even, I know some guys that don't even clean the house. But then again, they don't have much to clean in general, so. Myself. Starting a work from home job at the beginning of winter, death through my little. That desk is too high, bro. That desk is way too high. What are you going to type like this? Why is it? It's like, it's like at shoulder height, right? Seasonal to print seasonal depression brain for a loop but the sun is coming back and i am getting it together i've also fully committed to being a planner girly and a kindle girly what about a weight loss girly can we have that no we can't have one of those dude you're literally morbidly obese and you're sometimes i gaze upon these people and i think i get it you want to be a whatever you want to be a whatever but i always think you have priorities man you got to take care of things because I, I i cannot believe a world where somebody is comfortable being in the body size that they're in right now this is impossible dude you literally cannot stand up and having the ability to stand up as a human being should be incentivized i don't know about you guys but i love having the ability to stand up and walk and you know at any given point in time i can just leave my house and come back and walk upstairs and walk downstairs and if you're sitting here what if an emergency happened or you know god forbid something happened in your house and you had to leave your house what do you do you have to like scoot out of your house with the chair you're just done and don't get me wrong if you're like an older person and you can't do those things. I'm not saying that you're a bad person for that. Obviously, we all reach an age where movement is going to be a little bit more prohibited for others. But why would you expedite the process without like you do realize that you can lose weight. This is entirely possible. It's in your grasp to lose weight. And it doesn't take what these people claim to it to take. So, you know, usually these people will sit there and say it's genetics or there's nothing I can do because I've tried to lose weight for my entire life. And I've tried every single diet and it just I can never lose weight. I don't know what diets you're you're committing yourself to, but I'm going to keep it a buck with you. It is very possible for you to lose weight. It's actually incentivized for you to lose weight because you're literally every day that you keep this weight on you, you're probably taxing on like a year that you're taking off your life. And I'm not even exaggerating by that. And if you're not taking off a year, you're definitely taking off years off your joints. You're definitely taking years off your organs. And you're... You're only blessed with one set of organs unless you can go to the hospital and get another one. But even in those particular cases and scenarios, the, the doctors and the people at the, the clinics and the hospitals are not going to give a person of this size uh, a transplant. This person is like very, very low on the scale in terms of who gets what because usually they look at things like activity level, what they're doing in their life. Like is this person going to be a good candidate for this? If somebody's just going to get it like an organ transplant and they ultimately are going to go back the, doing the same thing, it'd be like somebody that had like cirrhosis. 
from drinking so much alcohol and then they go in like, I need a new liver and they look at you and they go, but you're an alcoholic. Are you going to change your ways if we give you this? No, they're not. No. So like, are they going to continue to drink? Are they going to abuse that, that new liver that they got? That's not a good thing to do. So when it comes to people like this, when you only have one set of organs, which let's be honest here, most people, one set of organs, why wouldn't you try to maximize the lifespan of those things as much as you possibly can through diet, through nutrition, through having a good lifestyle? I don't know, man. To me, I see these people just using and abusing their bodies. For what? For what? 2024. It feels good to read instead of just listen to audiobooks lately. Send me your Kindle Unlimited recs for plus size romances, especially. Plus size romances, dude. I get it. Like, we all want to read stories or we all want stories that kind of revolve around us. And I guess thin people have the monopoly on that, but it just kind of turns out that most of the time, thin people are the ones that are creating these movies. So, I guess. But. What do you like? You want to read romance novels about fat people to try to like <laughs> try to authenticate your position within the fat realm? I, it just it just screams really really sad, dude. I'm sorry, that's really sad. When I see people, I remember one time I walked into this girl's room and she was like, you know, black queen, black flowers, um, you know, black girl energy or whatever, black girl magic. And I walked into her room, dude, and there was like big posters of black woman. And it was like black, strong, African proud, this and that. And I'm just like, this is cringe, dude. Like, this is your whole personality. That'd be like if you walked in my room and you saw Serp, I guess. Like, technically, I guess maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. But it'd be like if I had a whole bunch of Star Wars memorabilia and I was like, I love Star Wars. Star Wars is so great. And there's nothing inherently wrong about that. But it comes off as like a little cringe. But it's fine. If you want to represent for the black queens out there, obviously, you know, I'm a black queen. Um, I do possess the black girl magic, as everybody has known. So I can change my hairstyle at any point. And I spend $300 a month on skincare products. So you have this like, <laughs> I get like you want to read romance novels. But whenever I say whenever I see somebody say I want to read romance novels, I always hear for what reason? Like, are you beating off to them? Or like, it's fine if you want to beat off. Is that, is that like your way your inadvertent way of telling us that you're beating off to romance novels? Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. But I feel like that's probably where we're going with that. I want more fat love representation fat love representation for yourself you do realize that you can't like force somebody to love you in the same way that you can't force other people to love fat people that's kind of like not how that works you need to actually work on yourself to make yourself a person of value if that makes any sense um i've definitely read a ton of them lately not good um, i mean hey if that's what you want to read whatever dude right there's i've read i've read tons of really really terrible disgusting um smut and I've even read like the One Direction ones, which are really all bad. They're like 95% gay. Most of them are gay. And there's like a woman in the corner beating off to like Harry and uh, whoever that other guy is. It's like Neil or something. I don't know. Where they're just sucking each other off. Harry's always the man in the situation, which is really weird. Because whenever I think about Harry, I think about him in the dress. Which I don't think of, I don't. If you're thinking about Harry Styles in a dress, I don't think you're going to think about him being in a manly direction. But I've read so many of these stories. And these dudes are literally all the time talking about, oh... Harry, your penis is so massive. It's so great. I even read one where there was like a crossover between Harry Potter and One Direction because they're both from the UK. And that shit was crazy, dude. Dumbledore came in, dude. Hagrid came in with his big ass salami meat. And he was dicking down people, dude. There was a whole bunch of like centaurs that were coming through. It was crazy. Um, I wasn't beating off to it, though, because it was gay porn. But I thought it would be funny to read. And uh, I didn't really originally know about this, but I knew somebody that had known about it and they had sent it to me and I just started reading it, not for the intention of beating off, but just because for entertainment. I know you, I know you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes when you're on the front page of Pornhub and you see something and you're like, what it, what, you know, BBW gets slammed by 18 white dudes. What? How does this happen? And then you click on just to see what's going on, you know, just to see what's, uh, what's up with that. Right. So it was like the same thing with that. And I... I'm probably going to be posting a little bit more about those. I think I might do a series. A series? How about yourself? Finding love as a BBW, as a big, beautiful woman, as a voluptuous? Okay. A little bit more about those. I think I might do a series. Have a great week. You too. Have a great week. Again, I think it's great that she's taking care of the household chores. That's really great. But... Like, when I see people like Amberlynn Reed that literally cannot take showers for an entire year because it's physically impossible for them to leave the bed without having major discomfort or pains across the entire body. And then I see a person like that who's, like, literally, like, chair-bound. Like, 90% of the, 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 the things that they're doing in their house are just on this chair. 
I don't think that that's a good thing. I don't think it's good. Now, granted, I think she should be free to make the decision to be obese. I think that. But most of the time, these people are working within the idea that there is no choice and that they have to be obese because that's just the way their bodies are. And it's all bullshit. It's all hogwash. It's nothing. It's not real, okay? You're putting on this grand illusion. And when the reality of the situation is you have full body autonomy, you can lose weight. It's not hard either. It's called calorie deficit. Figure out what works for you. And you know what? For somebody like of her size too, who's massive, right? I, I wouldn't be doubted if this woman was eating somewhere close to 5,000 calories a day, four to 5,000 calories a day to maintain that kind of calories. Like people don't realize this, but when you're fat, really fat like this, like really, really monstrously obese, the amount of calories that it takes to burn in your body are going to be like tripled or quadrupled because simple activities for me, which would be like raising my arm, don't really require many calories. But for somebody like her who's lifting, I don't even know, nine times, 10 times more arm than me, that's going to take more calories to burn. And it's always such an enigma to me when I see these people, because I'm thinking, how is it that you can be so goddamn massive, be burning the calories that I know that you're burning just existing, and you're eating to such a sufficient degree that you're still gaining weight or maintaining that weight. That's crazy to me. You're eating too much, way too much. And these people need to focus on weight loss because I'm, I'm sorry to say this, you're gonna die. There's no other way to say it than that. It's unsustainable to go down this life path. At those, I think I might do a series. I'll read her series, by the way. If she wants to do some romantic, uh, some sex erotica of fat ladies and other things like that, I'd, I'd listen to it. Have a great week. 300 calories is not enough for a meal. And 100 calories is not enough for a snack. Says who? 100 calories for a snack is actually really high. I'm not going to It just depends on what you're eating, though. Like, you can have the Orcos yogurts, and those are about 100 calories, and they'll give you 15, uh, 15 grams of protein, which is pretty good in, in, in exchange. That's pretty good, dude. And I feel like oftentimes these people, they say this stuff, right? And they don't, they fail to realize that 300 calories for a meal, some people... Right, some women are out there and they're eating probably around 1500. I've met many women that are eating 11 to 1500 calories on a daily basis because they're shorter people, like five foot one or something like that. And it's not uncommon for these women to be eating 1100 to 1500 calories a day. And when you're eating that much, when you're not eating that much food, because that's not a lot of calories, you have to really maximize the amount of food that you can eat within those calories to keep you satiated, to keep you full for as long as you possibly can. So 300 calories can go a long way if you actually know how to build a meal. So if you throw in the right amount of protein, you throw in some good carb sources, maybe you throw in some random lettuces or broccoli or something like that, whatever. Whatever your choices of food. But you can maximize it a lot. And 300 calories for a meal is not enough for a meal. It's subjective. It's relative. It just depends on what you mean. Like, it may not be a lot for, like, I don't know, Brian Shaw or Ronnie Coleman. Sure, it's probably not a lot because those guys are probably eating close to, I don't even know, like 900 to 1,000 calories per meal. But for, but for somebody that needs to be eating that amount, yeah, dude, it's probably enough. Like, it just depends on what you mean by it's not enough for a meal. It is enough for a meal, and it's also not enough for a meal. For me, it probably wouldn't be. For you, it might not be. But for other people, it probably is. And plus, 100 calories for a snack that seems pretty okay given the fact that there are plenty of snacks out there i don't know why these people so how much would it be how much would it be okay for a snack like two three hundred calories for a snack are you are you are you sure are you sure about that what is it like half a bag of chips no that's crazy no dude absolutely not you and if it was two three hundred calories you could just eat all right whatever man there's plenty of good choices but these people um i feel like they have no backing Eating close to or under your basal metabolic rate can be unhealthy and dangerous. I don't know about that. Close to or under your metabolic rate? Well, is it dangerous to maintain like 400 fucking pounds? I mean, it's the same shit. It just depends on what you mean by dangerous. Like, is it dangerous in the sense of, I would, sure, you can probably pull up some random thing like, oh, it's dangerous to eat under your metabolic rate because... I don't know, you 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 feel lightheaded or something? Like usually that only persists for a certain period of time and then you get your body eventually gets used to it. But sure, but like what is the alternative? Staying at this unhealthy, very, very obese body set body fat percentage for prolonged periods of time, which can literally be decades. I think that's kind of crazy, honestly. I I, I mean, sure, whatever you want to say. It could be dangerous, but like again, the wording is very, 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 very weird here, right? Focus on the wording. Under your meta and under your basal metabolic rate can be dangerous, not objectively. So it's just the wording, dude. It's like you know when you play Yu-Gi-Oh, right? I know this. I'm I'm bringing up Yu-Gi-Oh, right? But oftentimes when you're playing a game like Yu-Gi-Oh and you have to read cards, 
oftentimes the the rulings or like how you understand things is not so much about what the card says but more so about what it doesn't say so for instance if it says this card can be destroyed right well that doesn't say it can't be banished that doesn't say that it can't be um, removed that doesn't mean that it can't be put back to the hand there are plenty of words that you can use and then reading the outside the box lingo is going to get you more value if that makes any sense so like in this particular scenario can be dan can be unhealthy and dangerous well that's pretty that's pretty fucking dumb given that there are a lot of things that can be dangerous like for instance somebody could say getting married could be dangerous yeah, sure, but like the, 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 anything could be dangerous if you're looking at it like that. Driving can be dangerous, but is that gonna you gonna ignore driving your fucking car to the work? No, it, going outside could be dangerous. There are plenty of things that could be dangerous. Your hunger won't be satisfied by drinking a seltzer or chewing some gum or distracting yourself. That's your bullshit. I'm gonna keep it a solid buck. It may it might be subjective on this particular point, but I know when I'm like real deep in my work, when I'm real deep like doing something, dude. Sometimes I forget to eat, and I had literally. Um, I remember when I was like very, very, very skinny. I just never had hunger cues because I just trained my body to never really eat. And I don't know if I was anorexic, but I was definitely really, really below below weight. And it took a very I had to not be passive about it, I had to go in directly and I had to acknowledge that I'm, I'm eating less and I need to force myself to eat m like a lot of food to build up this appetite. And over the period of like two or three months, I went from literally never being hungry. I'm not even joking with you. Like when I did eat, it was like very, very few and far between like once a day at most. And it'd be like 300, 400 calories. But I went from doing that to eating three, four, five times a day. And each meal had protein and good sources of carbs. And I was sucking down water daily. And I was lubricating the inside of my mouth. And I was really feeling better. And I feel like these people, um, when they say this bullshit, like there's truth to it. But simultaneously, if your truth only applies to, I don't know, like a few a few portion or a few percentage points of the population, why are you even talking about it, man? Because like the majority of people, and if your message is for the majority of people, which is probably is, and you're telling people that if they eat below their metabolic rate, which if you're talking about, you know, calorie deficits, which is that's what that is. And most people that are practicing calorie deficits, I mean, I'm sorry that my deductive abilities are going off here, but most people that are in calorie deficits are probably obese or fat. So when they're eating below their calorie deficits, that's what they're supposed to do. That's like the tried and true method. That's like the number one thing you should do in terms of losing weight. So when you say this shit, I'm sure it can apply to somebody and it would be good information for somebody, but that somebody is so incredibly niche that in the general scheme of things, this is such a bullshit point that it applies to almost nobody, if that makes any sense, right? That's like if you were giving somebody dating advice and the guy goes, listen, I have no girlfriends. I've never dated anybody in my life. I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I I, I want to have a girlfriend. I want to have a long, loving relationship. And I want to get married. I want to have kids. All this other stuff, right? And you tell that person, this is what you do. You go to college. <laughs> you go to college. You go to Congress. You suck Joe Biden off to try to get, like, you know, girlfriend tax or something like that. It's never going to work. Like, it's just like, what are, you, what are you talking about? This is, like, unrealistic standards. That's what I'm hearing. Like, sure, it could help somebody. Sure, your unrealistic dating standards could help somebody, right? But most of the time, if you just gave them general information that could apply to most people, it's going to be good information, right? So when it comes to this shit, if you say that, oh, most of the time, deficits are not going to be or not most of the time but sometimes it can be dangerous i don't give a fuck honestly speaking it just like it's it's it doesn't matter because the other the other alternative is death or it's like a lifetime of just trauma and terribleness because you're just so obese that you can't handle life hunger won't be satisfied by drinking a seltzer or chewing some gum or distracting yourself your body doesn't shut off at a certain time in the night that's so true that is true your body does it does slow it does slow down the metabolism though when you're sleeping obviously so even if it's after eight o'clock and you're hungry please eat something your body knows how it just depends on what you mean uh, man it just depends on what you mean by please eat something dude if you're hungry i think sometimes you need to it just depends it like if you know that you ate enough for the day um, it might just be up to you to decide whether or not you want to go over that. Obviously, I'm not going to tell people what they can and cannot do, but, um, sometimes it doesn't matter if you're hungry, dude. Like, what are you talking about? There are plenty of times where you want to do something or you feel the urge to do something, but you don't do it. You know how many times that I was like looking down at the floor and I thought I could probably just smack my shit up right now and just real deal beat this shit like it owes me money. And I kind of feel the urge to do it, but I'm not going to because I'm at a grocery store. So I'm not going to do that in the same way that if you feel like you're hungry at eight o'clock and you've already eaten exactly what you need for that day, no more, no less, 
If you go over that, you're going to gain weight. So it might just be better for you to not eat, or at least if you're going to eat, have something very light because Just because this person is working under the assumption that your body knows exactly what it needs when it needs, which is bullshit. That doesn't that doesn't even make sense in any context ever. I don't even understand like why you would even ever go there. So like your body tells you that it's hungry, therefore you eat. You eat what? So like is it gonna tell you that you want pizza? So you eat three thousand calories worth of pizza. Now you gain weight. So like it did your body know what it needs? No. You have a brain. You have the ability to reason. You have the ability to understand what's gonna happen in the future. You can reason with yourself, right? Your body. I don't under, I don't care. I don't care what your fucking body says. What? I don't what, what is this argument point? What? Oh, well, I'm sorry, judge. I'm sorry, judge that I killed that guy. My body told me to do it. No, dude, you have a brain. Use your brain, okay? 2 plus 2 equals do that. Okay? Do the math, dude. You don't have to like you don't have to deduce that your body wants pizza or yogurt or it's like some, you know, high calorie a spicy, you know, senorita something like that. Uh you don't need to do that. You can ignore those things and you can progress. And it's mind over, it's mind over body. That, I mean, you should be. Or doing chewing that. some gum or distracting yourself. Your body doesn't shut off at a certain time in the night. So even if it's after eight o'clock and you're hungry, please eat something. Your body knows how to handle it. Hunger cues change on a daily basis. So if you ate more today than you usually do, it's okay. A calorie calculator on the internet can't accurately determine how many calories your body needs. It's true. Usually you have to give or take a couple hundred calories in some direction, but it's never... These people get caught up on these uh, very, very, like, very, very niche points. Like, oh, yeah, you know, the the, the calorie counter is not going to be completely accurate. Nobody ever said it was going to be accurate. And by the way, if you ever do download one of those calorie trackers, it tells you right there when you download it. It's not going to be accurate. In the same way that if you look at the food in the back of the label, it, there is a margin of error when you look at the foods because they're never going to be accurate. It doesn't make sense if one apple is bigger than the other apple. Do you think that apple is going to have the same calories as a smaller apple? No. Fuck no. In the same way that bread, for instance, it says usually on the back of the thing, like two, two pieces of bread is like 120 calories, but this piece of bread is slightly thicker than this other piece of bread. Is it still 120 calories? Probably not. It's probably a little bit more, but that's okay because everything's going to be within the margin of error. It's okay. As long as you're in the right area, as long as you're in the ballpark, that's fine. You don't need to be like exact and you don't, don't get hung up on the exact because you're never going to be exact. So if you're one of these people that like weighs food or you're somebody that's going to like perfectly accurately do that. So I'm not saying you can't do that, but most of the time it's like, You could do it, but it's like what you're doing is like end game shit. Like I'm sure if it works for you, it works for you. But most people, it's not good information because what you're ultimately doing is focusing on this heavy, like this super, 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 very, very niche circumstance of how to calculate calories when in reality, it really doesn't matter. You should just be getting a baseline of where you're at and a baseline of a deficit. That's really it. And that's going to apply to literally everybody. Okay. You don't need to get the nitty gritties. You don't have to go very, very detailed oriented on that stuff. You could just get the baseline, the generic, the general, and then you'll be good. So nope, that's a lie. This person is just like, (laughs) it's fine what they're saying. Like a lot of what, a lot of stuff that they're saying is true, but it's very surface level shit. And I could tell that they haven't thought about it, or at least if they have thought about it, they're being very disingenuous. (laughs) A calorie calculator on the internet can't accurately determine how many calories your body needs. Eating 1,200 calories a day is not enough for a grown adult. It just depends on the grown adult. It just it just depends on the grown adult, dude. You know you can't say that. That's not how that's not how that works. That's a general statement, okay? And uh, <laughs> if you're talking about somebody that's smaller, if you're talking about somebody that is like I don't know, like a girl that's like five foot one, a Latina maybe, um, you know, fuzzy on the face, whatever, right? That person may only need 1,200 calories. I mean, you know how many women, obviously anecdotal, how many women I've met that were eating way more than what they thought they needed? Because if you look it up on Google, you go, hey, how many calories should a woman need? It will say 2,000 calories, generally speaking. But sometimes you're not in that bracket and it's okay to adjust to those things, right? You're not always going to be normal. So if you're not a, if you're not in the normal spectrum of things, that's all right. Just calculate things differently. So they always like to talk about the BMI, the BMI, the BMI. It's not going to accurately, whatever, it's rooted in white supremacy i don't know whatever if you don't if you don't apply to the bmi in like normal categories that's fine you don't have to use a bmi there are plenty of other resources that you can use to calculate where you're at and even if you didn't want to calculate you could do a very 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 general thing of just weighing yourself daily weighing yourself every other day to see where you're at see if you're losing weight consistently at a slow rate that's what it should be about stress has a very big impact on appetite and sure (laughs) it's it's fine sure stress is a very yes it does but stress 
how much more calories do you think is going to burn on you to be stressed out compared to stress could lead to overeating. That's usually what it leads to because people have uh, usually people go for food when they're stressed out. For me, I'm not. For me, I don't eat at all. Like if I'm going through a very dramatic period of my life, I tend to not eat for days at a time because I just, I don't know, for some reason, it's just for me. But I know a lot of people have differences and a lot of people eat when they're stressed out. And that's, you know, obviously it's bad on both sides. And that could be what this person is talking about. Um, but again, like if you're consistent and you power through that, you'll still lose weight. And it can make you either want to eat more or eat less. Additionally, exercise can suppress your appetite. But that doesn't mean that it's not still important to... Exercise usually enhances uh, appetite, actually. If you if you got a good fitness routine and you're going in and you're actually doing stuff, your body will um, respond to the diet that you're... And your body will respond to the diet that you put in place because you're working out. So naturally, your body's going to require more fuel. And if you do it in the correct way and you're like actually prioritizing good proteins and you're prioritizing good, you know, actual carbohydrates, things that are going to help you out and things like that, it's okay to eat processed foods every once in a while, whatever you want to do. Um, your body will uh, respond properly to that. And you'll, to be honest, I remember when I was going to the gym, I most definitely had no appetite. But when I was like going down this journey of like, you know, self-acceptance and becoming more and more delicioso by the day, and I was being a slay queen edges or whatever, I most definitely gained a ton of appetite from going to the gym, working out, eating tons and tons of protein. I mean, literally I would have days where I would cook two or three chicken breasts and out of a big ass, like a giant plate of rice and beans and corn. And I would just literally swallow that shit down. I'd force myself to eat it. Sometimes I couldn't eat the entire plate because it was a massive plate. So I would just take that plate. And then two hours later, I'd come back to it. I couldn't eat it again. Two hours later, I'd probably finish it by that third time. And at the end of the day, I would re I would reach my my quota. And at the time, it was only like 2,000 calories, right? But now I can eat way more than that because my body actually is responsive to those calories. I'm not going to like on the verge of throwing up anytime I eat something like crazy high in calories. Anyway. Refuel after you work out. The way that you recover and build muscle after you exercise is by consuming carbs and protein. True. Hunger is not something to be ashamed of or a You can also consume fat too, but protein obviously is like super incentivized. By the way, fat is okay. Like it's okay to eat fat. You need fat in your diet. I don't know why this person didn't focus on the fat. The fat is like, you know, according to modern studies, fat is pretty good. Exercise is by consuming carbs and, and uh, focus on protein. Protein. Hunger is not something to be ashamed of or afraid of. It's just a neutral way that your body is communicating a need to you. Yeah, but like what happens, what tends to happen is that over the period of years and years and even decades of your life, if you've conditioned your body to believe or like if you've done, if you've eaten every hour or every two hours and you're eating consistently like high portions of food, what you're doing is you're training your body to this is the new norm, right? Like that's what happens. Like that's what an appetite is, right? When I didn't eat anything, I didn't have an appetite. Therefore I wasn't hungry. But when I did actually eat food, then I have an appetite. So if you're eating three, four, five, six times a day, and it's all ridiculously high calorie foods, and you're telling me that my body's communicating with me, dude, I know my body's communicating with me. That doesn't mean that I'm going to actually listen to it or at least like reciprocate to what it's doing. Because if my body is telling me like, yo, bro, I'm gonna let you know right now, you kind of real deal need to go to Mickey D's right now, pick up two QPs, a large fry, probably get the ice cream on the side. I don't know. I mean, to be honest, I'm just saying shit right now, but go there. There's a reason why you don't go shopping when you're hungry. There's a reason why you don't go to the, you know, you don't, you don't go to McDonald's when you're hungry because you know, you're going to buy unnecessary shit. And then when you get home and you eat that shit, you're gonna be like, I don't, I don't really even want it anymore. So I understand what you're saying, but in practicality, why the fuck would you ever listen to your body when you can literally listen to your brain instead? Because <laughs> your brain is where all the knowledge is actually kept. All right, whatever, man. This person is interesting. Honoring your hunger on a regular basis. Honoring. Communication and trust with your body. Dude, like it just honoring and trust for you. You can push your body to do ma amazing things. And just because you don't realize that or like the way this woman is like, the way this woman is communicating right now is like your body knows what it needs when in reality it doesn't. Is it, What about, what if somebody is like a crackhead or somebody is like really, really, really uh, addicted to a particular type of substance that's illicit and they stop doing it and their body tells them, hey, dude, you need this right now. You need this. Does their body actually need it? Probably because they're addicted to it, right? But you using your deductive abilities can deduce that this is not a good thing and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna consume this particular drug because I know it's gonna hurt me in the ultimate outcome of that. In the same way that if you eat a large quantity of food because your body's telling you, hey dude, listen, you've been eating like this for like 20 years. Why would you stop now? Keep going. Let's get let's go get this pizza, let's go get that ice cream, let's go get this and this and this and this, right? 
are you going to listen to it? If you do, that's, yeah, I mean, that's what you want to do. But like, if you don't listen to it, what do you think is going to happen, dude? You're going to develop new eating habits. So I understand what this person is saying. Putting too much value though into your body when you have a brain is interesting. Which is so crucial for having a healthy relationship with food. You can trust your body and you can trust your hunger cues. I don't believe this shit though. I mean, if you want to, bro, if you want to do intuitive eating, I know it works for some people, dude, but I think that majority of people, it probably wouldn't help given the fact that most people already have a poor relationship food with food in general, given the fact that the majority of America is literally fat. So I would not go, I mean, most of these people are doing intuitive eating. Most people are eating based off of when they want to eat, okay? That is what it is. Like that, I feel like that's generally speaking, that's what most people are doing already. So if you want to do intuitive eating that's fine as long as you do it responsibly but the way this woman is talking about it is terrible it's absolutely gross use your brain as opposed to your body i feel that in my life i have gotten a fair amount of criticism it's like you dress like a little kid Period. Well, i'm here to tell you why that is it's okay if you want to dress like a little kid by the way if this is what you want to dress like i mean it's weird it's obviously weird it's not socially acceptable but it's i right if that's what you want to do when i was actually a child and a teenager, I didn't get to have a limited two phase or an Aeropostale phase because I was too busy shopping at the one store at the mall that had sizes for me and dressing like your dad's legal assistant. I get it, dude. Okay, I get it. Like we all have fucked up childhoods and we all have things that we wanted to change. I don't even know what the Aeropostale era was. I was broke as a kid that I didn't have money for any of this shit. So <laughs> maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't have that phase either. And I think it's like, it's fine if you're sitting here saying like, oh, I couldn't I couldn't actually emphasize this particular phase in my life. Therefore, as an adult, I'm going to seek it out later on. That just screams like daddy issues, right? I'm not saying she has daddy issues, but I hear that a lot where people go, I didn't have a dad. And I see a lot of people seeking out like maybe I see a lot of like men seeking out validation from women in like a motherly way. I see a lot of women seeking out validation from guys in a very uh, daddy way, which is like not necessarily a bad thing if that's what the other person is looking for. But as an adult, it's like your job to unpack that or at least come to the understanding that, you know, things happen, shit happens, dude. Your parents were never gonna be, you know, completely good people because in this particular scenario, your mom, your dad were irresponsible enough to not, you know, like your mom and your dad are supposed to be the ones or your 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 guardians are supposed to be the ones that tell you not to be fat or not tell you not to be fat, but at least navigate you through the realms of dietary issues. Not all parents are informed on this particular matter, especially, I don't know, probably the last 20 years because the internet was not a thing for a very long time for like the majority of human history. So it was probably very, very difficult. And the amount, of, the amount of knowledge we have nowadays based off nutrition is like unparalleled compared to what it was back then. And I'm not excusing anything. Obviously, you should know that if your kid is fat, it's not a good thing. Your kid's going to be suffering for the day, every day of their life, given the fact that this woman is literally, I don't know, in her 20s, in her 30s. I don't know. But she's still a grown woman and she's carrying on the traits of being obese. So what happens to you when you're younger is like ingrained into you, right? It's been chiseled into the stone of your body, into your life, right? Into your mind. So when you're younger and your parents don't tell you, no, you can't eat that. No, it's not good to do this, right? They don't they don't give you proper acknowledgement on the dietary issues and things like that. They don't keep you active. You're going to be fat for the rest of your life. And I always say this because a fat kid is going to be a fat adult. It takes a lot of deliberate work to understand that as an adult because most of the time, uh, this is my black pill moment, okay? When you're 16, it's done. Like 16 years old, 16 year olds and below, that's like all of your you're, you're basically the same person that you are when you're 16. Um, usually, once you hit 16, all your character traits are pretty much developed. As you get older, sure, you start developing more and more and more, but the majority of them are going to be in that major time period. So if you if you sit there and you bestow upon your children bad eating habits, you tell them everything is okay and this and this and this and whatever, they're, they're going to be done for the rest of their life. You just cooked your kid for the rest of their life. And if your kid's graduating high school with high blood pressure and bad joints and you don't feel any type of way about that, you should. That's terrible. That's really bad. And uh, I get it. Like this person maybe didn't have the ability to do what they want to do. I know that I didn't. So um, I didn't have a lot of money growing up. I didn't have a lot of video games. I wanted to play video games. I didn't have a lot of toys. I didn't, you know, whatever the fuck. So as an adult, what do I do? I play old games that came out 20 years ago or I buy, you know, Star Wars figurines or collect maple syrup. I don't know. There's probably something fucked up with me too because I started watching porn at like 12 or something like that. But you know what I'm saying? Like there are things that are ingrained into you. And it's very interesting when I can hear people literally acknowledge what they have as an issue and do nothing 
anything about it. Like the fact that this woman is literally acknowledging that she has a problem because she grew up in a time frame where she didn't have access to clothes because she was very overweight and then sitting there nowadays saying like, I'm going to dress whatever I want to in this particular child format because I wasn't able to as a, as an actual child. That's concerning. That is not a good thing. Okay. Like fine. If you want to dress like that, but the fact that you can articulate the reason why you're doing it and it's not exactly something that's <laughs> it's, it's, it's not good then you should probably work on that. Therapy, talking to friends, family, or whatever, man. Stopping at the one store at the mall that had sizes for me and dressing like your dad's legal assistant or your church organist. So now, as an adult, they make cute clothes in my size. I'm going to heal my inner child all I wouldn't say that's healing your inner child. That's like those people... It's like that weird kink of people that didn't have childhood childhoods or like people that want to revert back to being child. Like what is that DDLG or whatever it's called? Daddy Dom little girl where I don't even know necessarily if it is sexual. Um, I, I remember watching a documentary on it on YouTube like a few years back. And I remember seeing a, a girl like a fully grown woman in like a playpen and the guy was throwing like balls at her and he was like he had one of those like connect four things i don't know dude and i i, I don't know if that was a sexual scenario it was very very weird to me people nowadays are into some weird shit right it's kind of crazy to think back like can you imagine going back 100 years ago and talking to a guy back then you're like hey dude can you believe that your great great grandfather the great great your your grandson and your granddaughter are going to be like on the floor playing in play pens at 35. They're going to be like, what are you talking about, dude? I, can you leave me alone? I got to go suck on this potato and sell three horseshoes to feed my family for the next like three days. So, you know, it's really interesting how time progresses and like how we are. Um, I don't know. It's like it seems like we're just like really OK with like mental health nowadays. And, like people are so open about it. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's like it's fine. Like I understand like even mental health. Most people do. Right. They have issues. But it's just so interesting nowadays how we just put it on the forefront and we promote it. So like, you know what I'm saying? Like people are just so open about the fact that they have mental health issues and they just like throw it out there right in public and people respond to it and stuff like that. And I feel like it's really interesting, too, because there are entire like people out there that are autistic or other things like that major health issues and they have giant followings and these people are not there mentally right like i'll give you another, i'll give you an example like daniel larson he has a giant following and people promote him and people talk about him and they do all this stuff right and don't get me wrong um i think you're free to talk about whatever you want he's an adult but given this given the fact that this particular individual is mentally absent like person that doesn't have like the most sound mind and whatever i think it's interesting that I don't know. I wouldn't say we take advantage of it, but it's almost kind of like people don't look at it for what it is, you know? Like, you could do whatever you want. It's also very, very, in my opinion, it's fucked up a lot of times when I see these people that are in these positions. Um, obviously, it depends on the mental capacity. For this particular individual, they seem pretty articulate. They can they can define their problems. You know, it seems like they can put two plus two, so I'm not going to like, you know, whatever. They, they can define what their problems are, which actually might be worse because if you're ignorant about it, then at least I can claim that you're ignorant. But in these particular scenarios, sitting there, you know, claiming that you're a woman <laughs> and then still doing it is kind of weird. Anyway, let's get on to the post. We've been talking about this for long enough. Fun fucking fact, actually. You can be over 300 pounds and still and have no fat related, which isn't actually a thing, do some research related issues. Yeah, um, maybe not... You know, it's it might be it just might be really really obscure issues that you're probably not facing at 300 pounds, 300 plus pounds. I mean, if you have 300 pounds, you're going to be facing some issues. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if you're like 21 or 18 or something like that, where your body's like fresh and new, maybe the joints are not experiencing a ton of ton of problems because it's new and you don't have you haven't pushed around an extra. I mean, if you're 300 pounds, depending on who you are, let's just say if you're the average man that should be like 160 to 180. You're walking around with an extra 140 to 120 pounds, which is a drastic amount of weight to be carrying around. I want everybody to try this. Don't try this. But to really find out if how much damage this actually does, just like grab a couple dumbbells, right? Let's say like, I don't know, let's say 140. Grab a couple dumbbells that add up to 140, right? In both hands, walk up and down the stairs four times and see, see how you feel after walking up and down those stairs four times now do that every day now walk down the stairs now go to the store now do anything get out of your seat with these these weights strapped to your chest that is doing damage every day your heart is pumping way faster your lungs are doing more your joints are being perpetually smushed against each other so naturally it's going to cause some problems and just because you're not experiencing those particular issues at right now and you know what's really interesting is that even though you're not experiencing right now they're probably still going on you're just probably ignoring them in the same way that somebody is living in an apartment and the smoke detector is going off consistently but you don't hear it because 
you just lived with it for a very long period of time. So instead of going up there and replacing the battery because you've lived with it for so long, you just ignore it. And you know how many times I've been into somebody's apartment and that shit's going off? It's crazy. You know, I've literally, I remember, I was in somebody's apartment and I heard it go off. I was like, hey, bro, your smoke detector is going off. How long is it going off for? He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, the smoke detector. He's like, what do you mean? And he didn't hear it because he, he just has, he just been living with it. And I was like, do you have a step ladder? And he was like, yeah, I got a step ladder. I, I went up on a step ladder. I took down a smoke detector, replaced the battery, and I put it back up. And like that, what is that, like five extra years of no smoke? Like how long has this guy been living? He didn't even know. He had no idea that it was going off. Some people can live in houses for literally like entire five-year stretches and not even realize that there's something that needs to be changed, but nobody does anything about it. It's the same thing when you're very, very fat. Sometimes you go through giant stretches of your life not realizing that you have major, major, major problems because these are just normative things for you. And it, what what it takes is like some big changes is like you get a heart attack or you go to the doctor and they're like, listen, dude, you got fucking cancer because it's overweightness or you, you have chronic, I don't know, knee problems because of this. A lot of people have to be like they have to go through life altering big, big time red flags, things that can literally alter your life in very major directions because – they, I guess they just have a hard time recognizing what the actual issues are. And it's really sad to say that because um, we should we should be more knowledgeable about this. But some people, especially with this type of rhetoric, it just keeps it keeps people in the bracket of being overweight. These people don't understand that no one has the same physiology as each other. Some people have disorders that make it difficult, if not impossible, to lose weight without medication, and even then, they may not lose all the weight. Also, being fat doesn't mean someone is unhealthy. By definition, it means you're unhealthy because you have excess weight on your body that is making you unhealthy. But fine, whatever. You can say that. I mean, it's obviously wrong, but it's like the most... It's like the most liberal way of being wrong. Like, a lot of people believe this, which is crazy. But... I kind of see, like nowadays, it seems like a lot of people are taking medicine in order to lose weight, which is fine I, as long as you're doing it responsibly and you have the assistance of your doctor and somebody that actually cares about you and that's going to be monitoring your health along with anything that you do. You should probably be doing it responsibly, but you being an adult, you have full autonomy and you can do whatever you want, right? So if you wanted to go to the doctor and you wanted to suck them off real quick, that's fine as long as it's consenting in the same way that I think you and your boyfriend or your girlfriend should be able to do whatever you want in the confines of your bedroom as long as all parties are consenting, right? So if you want to lose weight and you want to take medication, do it responsibly. That's great. But I'm going to have to tell you something that I feel like most people that are in this this like unhealthy standard of being fat and they go to medication as like the first like the first thing that they do, that's not good. You should not be relying on outside sources to try to alleviate the, the the problems that you have. Now, granted, if you've tried stuff and you've went down the path of trying to lose weight and it's just not practical for you, it's okay. I don't consider you to be a weak person. Some people just have very, very hard times doing it. Maybe you're being compelled by job. Maybe you're being compelled by lifestyle decision, things such and so forth. There are plenty of things that could prohibit you from losing weight that may not be in your control, right? I'm not saying that you shouldn't you shouldn't use the resources or take the crutches that you can have. What I am saying is that if you can doing if you can do it organically, if you can go through and you can practice calorie deficit, understand nutrition, go to the gym, you can lose weight naturally, it's going to be way better for you because usually these medical intervention things are going to have downstream effects that a lot of people are not prepared to deal with or um, not exactly they even want, right? And I'll give you another I'll give you an example, right? I remember I went to the doctor and I was losing my hair and I am losing my hair, right? And I started losing my hair at around probably 16, but I didn't really notice it. And I kind of convinced myself that I wasn't losing hair, but eventually I just kind of fessed up to it that I was losing my hair. And I went to my doctor and I said, hey, I looked into like this whole thing of endocrinology and I was like figuring out and like all this stuff. And I was like, I think that finasteride probably would be a good decision for me. And I remember my doctor, he said, nope, I can't prescribe that. And I said, why not? He said, because if I prescribe this to you, to me, it's going to hurt me so deeply because the chances of you contracting prostate cancer are increased by drastic levels. But I can refer you to another doctor that can do it for you. And I remember thinking about that because I knew that there was risks to getting prostate cancer. And the, the, on the upside, I would be able to keep the hair that I already had. And then I thought about it. And then I thought about it. And then I came to the conclusion that I don't want to have prostate cancer. Or at least I don't want to induce the effects of having prostate cancer and expedite it. Naturally, it's not like if – there, if you have – like a 300% extra chance of getting prostate cancer, that doesn't mean that you're going to get prostate cancer. It's just an increased chance of getting it, if, that's, if that makes any sense. So I came to the conclusion that it wasn't 
for me. And I decided that hair is cool, but ultimately I'm going to lose it anyway. Not everybody is blessed with the gen genetics of Ronald Reagan and able to keep their hair up until their 90s and die. So I just kind of assumed that it's okay. People lose their hair. Um, it is what it is. So sometimes accepting it and understanding that this might not be the best for you. This is why I always say, like, be informed. Always understand what you're about to do. Don't just take somebody's word for it. Go in. Do your own research. Understand what this can do, right? And um, deduce based off of those things. Obviously, look for outside help. If somebody knows more than you, you know, go to them. Cede some responsibility to them. That's fine. No problem. And uh, But you should obviously all the time, no matter what, be as responsible as you possibly can because ultimately it is your body and you want to keep it for as long as you possibly can. I know a lot of people might be religious or have a whole bunch of, um, I don't know, might be spiritual in some way, which is fine. But I know right now you're here with me, so we should make it as pleasant as possible. So we should prolong what we have as much as possible. And I think that you being here with me is such a delightful experience and I love you and I care about you. So I want you to make right decisions and look at things for as long as you can and make the right decision based on those things. I'm not saying that doesn't mean taking medical, you know, med medical invention. That's fine. That's fine. But just make sure you do it in your own terms. Understand these things and then um, act upon them in that way, if that makes any sense. All right, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all of those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you could do that stuff for me, I'd appreciate you tremendously. I love you. I care for you deeply every single day of your life. If you are a member, I want to thank you. I want to uh, give you that awesome rec rec recommend recognition for taking the possibilities of you being with me for the rest of your life. Thank you for that. I want to thank everybody that's a subscriber. Thank you so much. Um, if you want to become a member, all you have to do is click the all you have to do is click the subscribe button, which is much appreciated. And then also right after that, the join button will come up and you can click that. But if you don't want to do that, that's fine too. Completely okay. You being here right now is sufficient enough. I love you. I care for you. You're a beautiful specimen of human being. I hope you drank enough water today, but I know you did since you're looking lubricated all over the place in more than just one place. And you're kind of making me a little lubricated if you know what I'm talking about because I spilled some water on myself naturally, obviously. But um, I want you to write down below in the comment section – if you watch the video in its entirety, I want you to leave it down below by typing in ornament. Or if there's like an emoji for an ornament, then you can leave that down below. I have an ornament right here. This is a very old one, I think. I don't know what it's made out of, some kind of tin or something like that, or maybe even gold. I'm not that privileged, but it's an ornament, and it was on a Christmas tree. I don't have a Christmas tree anymore, though, because I got rid of it like three years ago. But I still have the ornaments because I think they're cool, and I think they can be used. Like, ornaments don't go bad. Like, they don't expire, and they don't have like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, things that get a little bit uh, tacky over time. Ornaments never get tacky, okay? They're always going to be gay. So, whatever. You know, like, ornaments are cool. Right down below ornament and then I'll recognize the beauty and the amazingness of you as a person because ultimately it's all I really look at is you every single day of your life because I can't help myself I'm sorry I mean it is what it is I gaze upon you with my naked eyes and I cannot believe the beauty the emanation the absolute luxuriousness that emanates off your body you're like a lightning rod you're like a outlet of amazingness and when I see you and I see the presentation that you have on a day-to-day -day basis, I cannot believe that you're willing and able to put in the amount of time, work, effort to accentuate yourself in amazing ways to ensure that you are properly hydrated, properly nutritionized, properly beautiful every single day. And it's definitely working because I'm acknowledging it and everybody else is acknowledging it, obviously, because look at you. You're oh, hubba hubba. You're looking really good. I don't care if you're a man, woman. It doesn't matter. All these things are irrelevant to me. As long as you are here with me, um, you're beautiful, you're amazing, you're fantastic. Thank you for being here today. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, my Twitter, my Discord, and my second channel. If you want to check out any of that stuff, feel free to do so. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.